Well, we're back at you again, and we're sure glad that we can come and bring you another discipleship empowerment word. You know, as we work through the Bible dictionary, we're finding all kinds of wonderful pearls and gems that are there to encourage us and help us as disciples to grow a lot deeper in the Word of God. Tonight, we're going to look at actually four different words. They don't have too many verses in the Bible, but the reason why I want to put all four of them together is because I believe they're all interconnected to one another, almost like a little bit like synonyms. And so when we look at these different words, you can see two of them right here, unity and harmony. But we're also going to talk about one accord and agreement. But before we get into that, I brought something along with me today. I don't know if you can see it okay. It's a piece of rope. And if you look really careful, it's a piece of rope that's got other little pieces of rope in it. And if you remember, there's a scripture that talks about in Ecclesiastes 4.12, where it says the three strands are in agreement, or this idea of unity and harmony. And the scripture says, and a three-cord rope is not quickly broken. And there's a reason for it, because if one is broken, then the other two can still provide strength. But when you put all three together, they provide a tremendous strength. And so tonight, when we look at these four words, one of them is the word accord. And if you see that, if you look at the word accord, you will actually see that it has the word cord in it. It means to be bound together, to be tied together. It means to be in agreement, to match up with, or to concur with or to harmonize with all these words to be in harmony to work together to have a pack a treaty something agreement a deal a contract whatever but it's the idea of accord but usually to have an accord you have to have at least a couple people involved the most or the least two and so as we talk about this we're going to see how these Four words are interconnected, and I believe bring a lot of strength, both to the disciple, amen, and to the church of Jesus Christ. And so continue to think about this. I'm going to be waving it around and showing it to you often tonight. So I want you just to remember to think about this word, cord. Okay, because as we begin to look at it, we're going to study the first word will be the word, Accord, and it's found a few times, and most of them are found in Acts. And it's kind of interesting where they're found. Because in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, it says, These all continued in one accord, in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary and the mother of Jesus and with her brothers. And it's interesting here that they were all in one accord. So they were all together, bound together, had strength together. But not only that, the Jesus' mother was there and his, you could say his half-brothers uh, were also there. And the women were there and they were in agreement. They were bound together. And it says that they were in one accord. How? When it came to prayer. They were in agreement. And they were thinking it through. It wasn't a unanimous decision, you know, like a, 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 a 7 out of 10 vote or something like that. They were all in one accord. They were all in one agreement. Then when we go over into Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had come fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So here we are again. They were one accord the first time around in prayer. Now they're in one accord when it comes to being in the same place. You know, they, they were just bound together. And they were believing in what Jesus had said to them. And then as you go to Acts chapter 2, verse 46, we find it again. So here's, you know, out of the five times that this word is used, it's all connected around the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the establishing of the church. And so in Acts chapter 2, verse 46, And so they continued daily in, or with, one accord in the temple, and breaking of the bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. So they were gathering together. They had come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And because of that, 
he bound them together by the Holy Spirit in one accord. And it's important that we remember that because that word, accord, is going to help us to understand as we go further on in our study tonight. Then just a few chapters over in Acts chapter 4 verse 24, we see that there was a prayer of boldness where God was, you know, they had got into challenges. Uh, Peter and John, they were arrested in that. And they were told not to speak the name of Jesus again. And they spoke boldly. And then it says in verse 24, So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God in one accord. They raised their voice to God in one accord. Lord, you are God. You made heaven and earth and the sea and that and all that is in them. You know, so they're recognizing in one accord who God is. So in one accord, they follow what Jesus told them to do, to go and wait in prayer. In one accord, they receive the Holy Spirit. In one accord, they break bread together. In one accord, when even some of them are put in prison in that, they are still together. Then one more, and we will go over just over into Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. And it says Paul is talking to the church and he's talking to them about unity through humility. And we're going to talk about the word unity a little bit later. But there is such a need for these words. You know, wouldn't it be great if we could all just be in one accord, all bound together? I remember doing that one time in a church. And we sang the song, Bind Us Together, O Lord. And I, I got a, a, a ball of cord and I took that cord. And it was in an evening service. It was about 50, 60, maybe 70 people there. And I tied them all up with one accord. Now, there was a couple people in the church, a couple mature people that were saying, we're not going to do that. That's below us. But I wanted them to understand that God wants us tied together in one accord. Amen. And so we see that again over here in Philippians where Paul is telling them, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So there was a oneness. And you're going to see that that idea of oneness when it comes to one accord, when it comes to an agreement, when it comes to unity, when it comes to harmony, God wants to take out of the individual and bring us together as one under the headship of Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? And that's why he wants to bind us together in one accord. And so that gives us our first word that it's an agreement with, it matches up and we concur we are consistent with it. We believe in it. Our next word to get tonight is going to be with the word agree. Now again, there is only three verses that deal with this word agree. And the first one is found over way back in the Old Testament, where in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, he says this, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? And it's interesting because he's saying, if there's no agreement, you won't be walking together. If you are, you know, are in disagreement, one will be going one way and another will be going another way. But if you're in agreement, you'll be walking together. And so that's what he was trying to show. Again, more than just one, but if two or three gather together in my name. See? There's so much in the scripture where the idea of coming together as one, but coming together as one accord, where we're bound together, coming together in an agreement. We agree one with another. Then over in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus uses this idea of agreement too. He says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. But I want to give you the context of it because he's talking about this whole idea. If you bind, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I have followed that principle all my life. 
you know, I believe in spiritual warfare and I believe of binding up the devil, binding up his authority, binding those things that he is trying to bind up other people with. I use that cord to bind him, the spiritual rope to bind him. But also I realize that God has given us an anointing, the power to set people free. And that's why it says in verse 18, As surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So that's why when I pray for my children, I pray for my grandchildren, I pray, I'm doing the ministry of binding and loosening. I'm not going to let the enemy have his way. And so where he has bound them up, I am cutting the ropes. And where they need to be bound up in Jesus, I'm binding them up through the power of prayer. But that comes again in verse 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree... See, agree on what? On the binding and loosening on earth concerning anything that you ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. It will be done. But then it goes on in 20, just to clarify it a little bit more. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So what happens if two or three are gathered together, what happens? We come in accord. When we're doing it together in the name of Jesus Christ, we're coming into accord with Jesus. We're coming into an agreement with Jesus. And because we're doing it according to the will of Jesus, that whatever we ask, it will happen. Why? Because we are bound together with Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? That's the idea. Then we move over, way over into 1 John. 1 John uses this idea of agreement again where first john 5 8 says let me just find it here first john 5 8 says and there are three that bear witness on earth the spirit the water and the blood and these three agree how as one these three and so that doesn't so i i think we need to understand that god is not working independently in different parts you know, he doesn't work independently of the Holy Spirit. The Father doesn't work independently of the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't work independently of Jesus. Jesus doesn't work independently of the Father. No, they are all in agreement. They are the three-cord rope example. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the three-cord rope that cannot be easily broken. Can, in fact, can't be broken at all because it's made of our God body or made of our god father son and holy spirit that's what he's saying and there are three that bear witness on earth and just above that in verse 7 he says for there are three that bear witness in heaven so he's, there's three that bear witness in heaven who are they the father the word which is jesus christ and the holy spirit and these three are one so in verse 7 he says that and then there is those who bear witness on earth so in heaven, there's a witness, and it's a three-cord rope. Father, Word, and Spirit. On earth, there's another three-cord rope where it talks about the Spirit, the water, and the blood. This idea of three becoming one. We even know that in marriage where it talks about the two shall become one. So this idea of agreement. So we talked about the first word, accord. The second word, and come into agreement. But the third word, I think, also ties into it because it's the word unity. There is such need for unity, not compromise, you know, or not abstaining on a vote and saying, well, I'll go along with the flow. That's not unity, you know, and say, well, they're going that way. I'm just going to no. know unity is to be of one mind. When we're of one mind, when it comes to the scriptures, when we're on one mind, when it comes to the word of God, there needs to be a unity, not only in the home as a husband and wife, but there needs to be a unity within the church itself. And he says in Psalm 133, verse 1, he says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He goes on to say, It's like precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down to the edge of the garment. It is like a dew of Hermon descending upon the mountain of Zion. For there the Lord's commandment, the blessing, 
life evermore. So this idea of unity is so, so important. I don't know how we're going to be able to get back to it other than through prayer. I believe we have to go back to that whole area of coming back into one accord when they gathered in the upper room in prayer, when they gathered in the worship, then they gathered to be filled with the Holy Spirit, when they gathered to have communion together. I think that's where it starts. And then as we gather, we're going to come into an agreement. And when we come into agreement, then we're going to allow the harmony or the unity to take place. There needs to be unity. And that says that's what the Lord says. For brethren to dwell together in unity. When there is disunity, the devil just loves it. The devil loves to bring disunity. His job is to bring destruction. His job is to bring division. And that's what he loves to do, is to do that to us so that he does that so that we can not, then not walk in the power of God. When there's disunity, the presence of God can't be there. He wants us to come into unity. He wants us to work together. And Paul tells us to the Ephesian church the same thing. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, he says, he says, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit, the bond of peace. You know, and, and again, if we just go back up to verse 2, with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, remember we talked about long suffering, bearing with one another, how in love, endeavoring to keep the unity. You know, even the Bible, even Paul realizes that sometimes it's going to be difficult, but we need to work at keeping unity. Do what all we can to keep unity. And you know, I know it is possible. I know it's possible that when a three-cord rope is brought together, it's not easily broken. I don't know, some of you were at our marriage, and you remember I told the story about how I gave Call Wynn her, her engagement ring, and the engagement ring I bought in Israel, and that engagement ring was a three-cord rope. And it's always reminded me of how Call Wynn and myself and God Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit would become one, bound and strengthened together. How? In unity. And so when we do that, but then he goes on in verse 13 of chapter 4, just to remind us a little bit again about unity. He go up to verse 12, for the uh, equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body. How do we do that? Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure and the, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. As we come together in unity, praise God for that. And how does unity come together? Through faith and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that as you get more into Jesus and allow Jesus to get more into you, you're going to discover that there is greater unity. You know, it's hard to be angry with somebody who continues to love you and continues to show you grace and mercy. There is unity that comes together with that. And I believe that's what we need to walk in the faith of unity. Then we come into our last word for tonight. Again, it's part of that three-chord rope. There is the cord. There is agreement, there is unity, and then there is the last word where we need to come in the harmony. And I think harmony is the best way to explain. I think harmony ties it all together. Because harmony is a music term. And if you're going to sing in a choir, or you're going to sing someplace with a group of people, you need to be in harmony with them. You need to be in sync with them. This idea of harmony, again, means to be agreed, to have an accord, a coming together, a uniting, a mixing together, so that you can become one. Because you can tell in a choir, if somebody is singing off key or singing in another direction, it stands out. But God wants us to sing in harmony, one with another. That's what's so important. And when you can do that, there is power in the anointing. 
I believe when you sing in harmony and you worship God, you worship Jesus Christ, there's a oneness that comes together, and out of that oneness comes the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Bible says Jesus is in our midst at that time. If two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of them. And that's what brings forth the strength to this court, to the idea, to the idea of agreeing together with Jesus, to the idea of being unified together with Jesus, and the idea of being in harmony with Jesus Christ. So in Romans chapter 12, as we go over to Romans 12, now some different translations use different words, but in Romans 12 it says, Be of unity towards one another. Some translations say, Be of sound mind or same mind towards one another but isn't that beautiful be in unity towards one another you know when you're working together be in unity towards one another do not set your mind on high things but associate with the humble do not be wise in your own opinion but be in unity don't act like you're so smart and you know it all just let it come and flow together give other people a chance to speak get other people a chance to voice their opinion, give other people a chance to speak on behalf of their Lord. Because when you do that, there is unity and there is harmony. And so there needs to be, be of harmony towards one another. You know, let's sing together towards one another. Let's make that magnificent choir. Have you ever heard Handel's Messiah at Christmas time when it's done properly? I very rarely do I not weep when I hear Handel's Messiah. When I think about how God poured that into that uh, musician and caused him to write those the notes and caused him to write those words and how powerful he must have had a tremendous vision of Christ and to be able to write that. And there was such harmony that was poured out during that time. Then our last verse comes over in 2 Corinthians 6.15. He says, And what harmony has Christ with Bela? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what is trying to say here is that what unity, what harmony, what agreement can anyone have with an opposition, with somebody that's of the devil? You know, can Jesus be connected with the enemy? No, there is no unity. Can an army fight together unless it's unified? No, it cannot. Can we oppose the enemy in prayer and in the anointing of the Holy Spirit unless we are in harmony and unity? And the answer is no, we cannot. There needs to be, and that's why so often when I've done deliverance ministry or other types of ministry or praying for the sick, I will go and find two or three that I can believe that are in unity and in harmony and in one accord and agree in the importance of praying for the sick, agree in the importance of praying for deliverance ministry, whatever it may be, because there's power and anointing and agreeing together in unity and harmony. Can you say amen to that? Can you say, yes, Lord, that's where it's at and that's where we need to get to. Now, unfortunately, not everybody will agree with that. Not everybody will say, oh, that's not important. That's being too spiritual. No, it's not being too spiritual. It's what Christ wants us to do. He wants us to be one body under his headship. He wants us to walk according to his harmony, according to his unity, be in agreement with his word, and be tied together. So that whatever we bound, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever we loosen on earth shall be loosened in heaven. And this is what a lost world needs to see. That needs to see that every disciple of Christ is in unity, is in harmony, is in agreement, and most of all, is bound to Jesus Christ. Totally wrapped up in Him. Amen. Is that your prayer today? Because I believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do to us. And that's what the challenge is. Can we come together with one another? 
Can we put down our will and take up God's will? Can each of us, can you imagine if the three of us or four of us or five of us would lay down our will in a church service, lay down what we think should be sung, would lay down what we how we think things should be preached, just lay it all down and come together in unity and harmony, what anointing and power there would be in the service. Isn't that true? Do you know what I'm talking about tonight? I hope you do. I hope I'm not confusing you or trying to say, what is he saying? No, I'm just saying something very simple. Let's get together. Let's take a stand together. Because as we do it together, there is a oneness of agreement. There is a oneness of unity. And there is a oneness of harmony. And it all comes when we get connected to Jesus Christ, to the Father, to the Son, and in one accord with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for these little words, these little gems that bring us together and gives us the idea of a four-chord or a three-chord rope, where the rope itself is one, but it's made up of three parts of agreeing, of unity and of harmony father let that be our prayer tonight that as a husband and wife we will be together in harmony unity and agreement as a church we will be in harmony unity and agreement as a ministry i thank you oh god that colwyn and i are not out here by ourselves but we are out here with a body of believers in unity harmony and agreement and because of that, we're seeing things take place, miracles happen, things move that we never thought was possible because where we put you in the midst of us and we surrender our will to your will, Lord, there is a power, there is anointing, there is a miracles, and most of all, there is your presence. So I thank you today for what you're going to do and continue to do through these little gems of the words in our lives. And Father, start with us. Help us to find one another. Help us to find two or three brothers and sisters where we can agree together, O oh God, in prayer. Where we can come together in prayer and unity. We can come together in ministry and harmony. And Father, that we will just see the hand of God continue to move in these latter days now. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being in agreement. Thank you for being in unity. Thank you for being in harmony. And thank you for joining together where we can be in one accord in Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And Lord willing, we'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye now.